welcome to Television City News. I'm Bianca Martins. It's great to have you with us. In the news this week, police concerned over illegal fishing in Sydney South, industrial action slows the response to a house fire and zombie geishas take over Sydney as supernova comes to town. But first, police are warning owners of exotic birds to be on the lookout for thieves. Exotic bird thefts are on the rise in Western Sydney, with local breeders reporting thieves often line up buyers online before selling the birds on the black market. Kellyville Pets owner John Grimer says there is a growing demand for exotic animals. Unfortunately it seems to be a growing trend. Um, there's been private breeders who have had their birds stolen. Um, uh, one in particular is our customer who's had uh, some of her birds stolen recently. At $7,000 each, macaws are one of the most valuable birds on the black market. There is a demand for some birds on the black market. Uh, some of those birds are like Amazons, uh, African greys, uh, any of the macaw family. Um, Echolectus, one of our customers had their Echolectus stolen recently. Um, and I think it's because uh, on the black market they're worth something. Uh, they could be worth anything from $1,500 to $10,000 for one bird. Uh, so that's probably why they're, they're sourcing these birds as opposed to common birds. The store is offering a reward for the return of two baby macaws that were stolen last week. Well, when I found out our birds were stolen, I was actually on holidays at the time and, and uh, we were on our way back from our travels and I was pretty devastated. And, and I know the, the guys here who work with the birds every day are absolutely mortified that these birds were stolen. Authorities are reporting recreational fishermen continue to fish illegally in Botany Bay, George's River and Port Hacking. Botany Bay Water Police Sergeant Brett Prentice says it's been 10 years since fishing became illegal in the area, but people still didn't realise they need a licence to fish. He said there had been an increase in the use of illegal equipment, including netting and lines. A Sefton man was recently fined $10,000 for illegal possession of hundreds of saltwater nippers. Emergency services response to a house fire in Sydney South was slowed following a fire and rescue New South Wales strike over work cover reforms on Thursday. Father and son Andrew and Freeman Arbuckle were the first people on the scene of the Ramsgate house fire and said police arrived well ahead of firefighters. The fire is believed to have burned through the ceiling to the roof and by the time the fire services arrived the house was engulfed in flames. We immediately pulled up and we rang Triple O um, and got a hold of the Triple O people while my son here, Freeman, he ran inside the house to check there was anyone there um, and he got the lady and her grandson out of the downstairs area. A fire and rescue New South Wales spokesman said striking firefighters did not attend the scene at Ramsgate after walking off the job that morning. The whole bottom of the house was all smoky in the other part. Um, then we tried getting in, um, couldn't get in. By the time my dad had called the ambulance, 20 minutes afterwards there was no one here. We tried breaking through the door, back door, didn't, ha didn't work. Um, after that, was just waiting for the cops. He said calls were rerouted to the Rural Fire Service and Air Services Australia. Firefighters in Sydney, Wollongong and the Central Coast voted to stop work for five hours over the state government reforms. However, other emergency services covered for them. A prohibited snake, a stolen dog and drugs worth an estimated $50,000 were seized by police in raids across Sydney's west on Thursday. Police made the raids as part of Strike Force Raptor investigations into outlaw motorcycle gangs. A 19-year-old alleged member of the Rebels bikey gang was among the arrests made following the earlier raid of a tilopia home that netted two guns, 120 rounds of ammunition and a kilogram of drugs. About 400 people rallied at Wilton Community Centre on Saturday to protest against the federal government's airport proposal for the area. Transport expert Noel Child says alternatives to Wilton do exist. Local MP Jai Rao was disgusted that Federal Transport Minister Anthony Albanese did not attend the rally and told those gathered he would fight the airport plan. Wollandilly Deputy Mayor Ben Benassik also wants Mr Albanese to face affected residents. Lethbridge Park Community Kitchen may be forced to close after Housing New South Wales withdrew funding for the service. Project Supervisor Deborah Leo says the volunteers are devastated, while service users like Rebecca Astill worry for the future. 
The group's volunteers and work for the Dole participants provide free breakfasts and hot lunches three times a week and about 200 people have completed their hospitality training there over the past five years. Plans for a new regional tourism information centre showcasing the MacArthur region are well underway. The Australian Botanic Garden at Mount Annan, the region's biggest tourism drawcard, has released the concept design for an iconic new building to be built at the garden's Norellan Road entrance. It will feature glass walls to bring the outdoors inside, a cafe overlooking a man-made dam, a playground, dog track and walking trail. How long is a piece of string? Long enough to tie 1,500 students together in a fight to stop bullying at their school. Glenwood High School launched the string movement with a video of students calling on their peers to protect each other against bullies. So we introduced the string movement um, at an assembly, a whole school assembly last Friday and um, after the assembly we encouraged people to come down to the quad in the playground and sign the pledge in which they promised um, to stand up against bullying and we gave each person who signed the pledge a piece of string to tie around their wrist. The string is designed to be a reminder to students to help stop bullying whenever they could. Prefects are also wearing t-shirts promoting the campaign. The anti-bullying pledge has helped our classmates because they have a clear understanding of bullying is now and I know for a fact that some of them have stood up against bullying and reported it so it's making a really positive um, effect on our school. Together we're tying up the loose ends. A Tamil couple has just married 35 years after being separated by fate. Deborah and Tony Frost dated in high school in Britain but split when Mrs Frost's family migrated from England to Australia in 1976. They lost contact after Mr Frost joined the Royal Air Force and ended their long distance relationship. Both married and divorced in the three decades before finding each other again on Facebook three years ago. An exhibition of artworks by Australian Muslim women is being held at the Kasula Powerhouse Art Centre. The exhibition, No Added Sugar, features works by 18 women and includes art installation, drawing, photography, painting and organic material. The artworks reflect different ways in which Islam is represented, not just as a faith, but as part of the women's identity. Curator Rosela Baslamit says an exhibition aims to bring awareness and understanding about how Muslim women live, love and learn in Australia. Some of the concepts that have been tackled are um, how, for example, one of the artists look at her own spiritual path and spiritual uh, understanding of faith. Uh, some of it is about um, enforced separation experiences of refugees. Um, another is about uh, raw experiences of war and people who have experienced war in, 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 in Lebanon. Uh, another one is about migration and, 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 and so on. So it's really personal uh, look at uh, identity and the artist's identities. Themes include imagery of war, the taboo tale of divorce in Islam and traditional henna art. Mrs Baslamet says the artists explore their culture and address their own methods of self-determination through their work. Another one is looking more at spiritual, her spiritual understanding of faith where she is repeat, repeating over and over again, uh, writing on the walls a certain verse that for her helps her to meditate and to calm down. But at the same time, she's looking at how, how her whole journey uh, through faith and what really constitutes her identity and how can she look at these uh, like say the sacredness of these opposites and how they constitute uh, her own her, her own self and her own identity the exhibition will run until July 8 the pounding of six Japanese drums opened Wyndham College's multicultural day celebration in Quakers Hill on Wednesday held at Narimba Education Precinct events included an acrobatic performance a medieval enactment a traditional costume contest cultural dances, sumo wrestling and food stalls. The event coincided with Refugee Week, celebrated throughout Western Sydney with a range of events. It wasn't exactly love at first sight for Symbio Zoo's two new red pandas, but manager Matthew Radnich hopes the pair will grow on each other. The two pandas, Indira and Hamal, have been given to Symbio in Sydney South in the hope the critically endangered animals will breed. Hamal, the male, arrived at the zoo from Adelaide on Tuesday and was released into the pen he will share with Indira on Wednesday morning. 
Not much has been left to chance for the pair, who were introduced the day before the winter solstice, considered the peak of their breeding season. And in sport, after months of waiting, Western Sydney's new A-League team is taking shape. A club name, Logo and the first group of players is due to be announced on Monday, with the new club name believed to be the Western Sydney Wanderers. The club has less than five months to assemble a 23-man squad and have already set their sights on signing out of contract Australian skipper Lucas Neal to a marquee player deal. Granville District's Football Association Chairman Graham Corrett said a Western Sydney A-League team would give local players something to work towards. With this new team arrival, it will just benefit the community. It will benefit uh, player development and within all associations. It has got a pathway for these players to, to further their career and also the funding of it will, will help, develop the, help, uh, help the association to develop these players. Several other Australian players have also been linked with a move to Western Sydney, including former Socceroo Scott Chipperfield and Sydney FC duo Michael Beecham and Mark Bridge. Home ground options include Parramatta, Blacktown, Penrith and Campbelltown. Last week's draw confirmed the club will host the city's first derby against Sydney FC in Round 3. Western Sydney starts its season at home to the Central Coast Mariners on October 6. A Lamia basketballer is making a name for himself in America. After his first year playing college basketball, Sam McBeath has been named Nickel State University Freshman of the Year. The 21-year-old plays for a university in Louisiana and says he relishes the challenges presented to him each game. McBeath will return to Tour Australia with his university team in early August. The Westfield Sports High School softball team is celebrating after winning the New South Wales Combined High School's Girls Softball Knockout for a record 10th time. A large chunk of the team comprised Year 7 and 8 girls who were up against players four years their senior. The girls won a tight final against Cheltenham Girls High School finishing 7-6. And finally, you wouldn't be blamed for doing a double take at Sydney Olympic Park this week as the Dome played host to the 10th annual Supernova Pop Culture Expo. Cosplay devotees dressed up to show their support of well-known characters and spotting favourites in the crowd was half the fun. It was amazing when we got in and we saw everyone in costumes. Like You could see uh, people you see in movies uh, walking around, so it was really amazing. Fans dressed as Ghostbusters, Pyramid Head and Zombie Geishas got into character, with many putting on an impromptu show for the crowd. And why is the rum gone? And that's all the news we have time for. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. I'm Bianca Martins. We'll see you next time.